Hello and welcome to another exciting episode of Q Sports, your one stop shop to all things billiard, snooker, and um, the beautiful game of pool. My name is Emmanuel Otufejo, and as usual, I have with me in the studio, Joachim Idada. Emmanuel, my pleasure as usual. Alright, glad to have you here. Alright, um, basically, there are news updates, upcoming events that you will see flashing on your screen, and then we'll be right back. Welcome back everyone, this is still Q Sports, your one-stop shop for all things billiards, snooker and pool. Alright, on the show today we'll be talking talent development and I'll also be talking about, um, I mean, the prolific uh, Jamie Jones uh, who has just got um, suspended. Alright, we're talking talent discovery. Let's see this exciting video about the 12-year-old Oliver Sykes. We'll be back. Snooker is a game of precision and concentration. It's difficult to master and can take years of practice to perfect, but not for 12-year-old Oliver Sykes. The young potter from the English county of Hampshire is already well on his way to a successful career in the sport. I'd love to be a professional and play on telly and play against professionals like Ronnie or Trump. Oliver began playing just before his eighth birthday. After taking on his older brother at his local snooker hall, his family could see the potential in him. They enlisted the help of highly renowned world snooker coach Tim Dunkley, who is known for working with young players. He's got a lot of natural talent, and he's progressed a, progressed a lot faster than most of the other youngsters here. And from a very early age, from the age of eight, he was obviously going to be a very good player. He's at the level of, of the top players um, at a younger age. So he's playing at the standard that the 16 and 17 year olds are at the age of 12. After he began working with Tim, Oliver started winning matches in his local league. Up against much older players, he won a record five titles in the league. I, I was quite anxious at the start, but then when you get used to playing them, you feel like you can beat them and you know how to play against them. And then, well, at the start, I had my family all around the table helping me with like the points and stuff. And now it's just automatic. Oliver has an impressive ability to pull off an array of difficult pots. So much so that he's earned himself the nickname, The Sniper. Classy left-hander also has a knack for getting himself out of tricky situations on the table. His, his temperament, his mental strength is excellent. Um, for a 12-year-old to have temperament around the table and the strength that he's got is tremendous. Um, it doesn't matter who he's playing, he plays the same way and he's got the same attitude around the table. Um, he beats himself up when he loses, okay, but that's... Um, that perhaps shows how determined he is. He's got the focus that a professional would have at the age of 12. He's only a little kid. Oliver's dad, Dean, tells us more. And Oliver will get it in time after time after time, and it gets the other player quite demoralized, really, because they can't put the ball safe anywhere on the table without him getting it in. I'm always looking for new strategies and then, like, Picking like the right shot, which what I think to do, and then I'll play it, and then hopefully it goes in. 
Last season, Oliver finished second in the Southern Division of the Regional Junior Tour. It's a result which means that he automatically qualifies for the Premier Junior Tour, where he will be the youngest player competing on the national circuit for the country's best under-21s. After recently racking up a new practice high break of 117, the 12-year-old is well on his way to emulating his favorite player. I like Judd Trump because he does, he's a really good player, all-around player, and he does lots of good trick shots at the end of the matches, and he's always been a great player to watch on TV. Away from the table, Oliver enjoys playing football with his dad. Sometimes I like, I like to get away with, from snooker because like do lots of tournaments sometime every week. So then sometimes I take a break a little while, do something different like badminton or tennis or something like that. And then I'll come back and play. Having been selected to play for England at the home internationals in Leeds, Oliver will be practicing hard to make sure his game is in top shape. And honestly, to play for England under 16, it's amazing to be with one of my friends as well, Jamie Wilson and Aidan Murphy. It's like, it's gonna be so fun to have a week in Leeds, almost like a holiday. I'm really, really proud of him. It's not really sunk in, sort of, um, properly yet. I'm yeah, immensely proud of him, really. He, he deserves it, because he, he just puts so much in and is so keen and enthusiastic in the sport. And, um, yeah, he deserves everything he's, he's getting, really. If he can keep going and if he can keep progressing, then he can go as far as he wants to go. But it's very important not to look too far ahead. He just needs to keep looking at the next stage. I've watched him go through all his various milestones, like a first 50, like winning his first tournament, and each one, is trem I'm tremendously proud of each one he passes. Um, then, of course, getting his England call up. I mean, you can't get prouder than that. All right, Jordan, so what do you think about this video, 12 year old talent, Discovery. How does that help us here in Nigeria? Uh, it's clear that um, we should stop doing what I call um, accidental uh, discovery. Uh, accidental discovery. Or um, I like uh, one of our, our no well known politician say he is accidental uh, public servant or something like that. Yeah. That there must be a delivery plan, mm. a well-laid structure, a well-laid program put in place uh, in the area of talent hunt, talent discovery, talent development, and above all, uh, all of that is aimed at offering the youth an opportunity to showcase their talent. Mm. Uh, what we just watched about the other sites. It shows, it's, it's a testament of what in other developed time, what they do. Because even if you search the web, you will see that um, uh, Ronnie, that uh, Sullivan, he started playing snooker at the age of uh, seven. Riverside, I believe he has started much earlier, about eight. Right now he's 12, and uh, you can hear he's going to play even in the junior. Playing among the big boys. He's playing in, in a category that, under normal circumstances, you would say he's totally out of his eighth grade. Mm -hmm. But because he has acquired the necessary skill mm -hmm. that has earned him a place at such a level. Mm -hmm. So that is what is important. We should not just uh, continue this style we do in Nigeria where your talent is discovered by chance. Because uh, the Chinese are doing well when it comes to Zuma. Even now, when it comes to pool, the Chinese are doing very, very well. There are quite a lot of young children, 30, even 3 year old, 4 year old, 
If you go on the web, you see them, what they're doing, well, because uh, the Chinese are determined to de dominate Q sports, especially snooker. And who they are determined to, like, even the Chinese are trying to build a snooker city. They are trying to build a snooker city because they want to compete with Crucible. Crucible is in Sheffield is the venue where the World Snooker Championship holds. So they want China to be the new mecca for snooker because not only will it give their, the good, their players the opportunity, it's also have, it also offers economic value. Sure. So we in Nigeria should stop all of this fire degree approach and especially when you are seeing a situation where uh, there's effort at making a uh, few sports. Olympic sports. So if you continue this approach, even in Africa, we will be able to survive. Mm. So there Thank you for mentioning that. So basically, we know that there are you know things in the offing, you know, about making um, snooker, billiards, pool, you know, and Olympic sports, say maybe in 2024. And definitely Nigeria has to start, you know, having a deliberate plan. Yeah, that you know, like we should, talk we should about have things like academy talent. Should yeah. I have an academy? where these young players can be tutored and mentored by older players. Some of these players, it is their parents who introduce them to the sports. But some of them, it is their parents actually subscribed and went to register them in academies. Mm. So it's not just a matter of, because most people, I remember once a friend of mine that was a pastor who was preaching in church. And you talked about, oh, I go every twice a week now, just after, after retirement, I now play pool. I go with a friend to play pool every Monday and every Friday. And even their sisters, their staff has said, oh, you hmm, they're so surprised. Go and play pool. So a young guy came to meet him and said, sir, you mean you go and shoot? He said, yes. He says, ah, that's going to you see how we are all. So this, that's one of the things like, that we need to eradicate. Eradicate such things that are psychic, you know. Yes, we do not have to understand. All right, but I think the message is clear. Talent development needs to be topmost if um, the beautiful game of um, billiards, snooker, and pool is going to you know develop, especially here um, in this part of the world. All right, let's move on and talk about. We've talked about the young guy, let's talk about the older guy, Jamie Jones, getting his suspension. What does that tell us? It tells us quite a number of things. One, it tells us that uh, Q Sports, as well as Snooker, is no joke. Mm. Like they are what I call the ethics of the game. Mm. And uh, one of it is that he's been accused of having influenced illegally the results of one of his matches and it is against the rule of the of the of the rule and uh, the WPDSA that's the World Pool Billiard and Snooker Association uh, has now set up a committee to investigate. to investigate him. They didn't indict him but they said he has a case to answer. So now that he has a case to answer, uh, they have said, till the final result is out, is he will not be in the master store. That is a serious punishment because uh, not only is he going to be, he's going to be using a lot of money, mm -hmm. and even the sponsorships, he might also and his reputation, use, and his reputation, he might also lose. Um, I think it's uh, section 2.2.1 that talks about betting and um, I think it's 2.2.3 that talks about, um, I think the, the, the import is the, the rule saying that if anybody approaches a snooker player with a view to influencing the result of any match it is the responsibility of the snooker player to go and report mm. that we are calling influencer or that incident. Mm. So it is not the matter that you must be caught. 
Mm. It was because it's not good enough. The idea that you had, whether it's a third party who tried, whether you were somewhere where you were being discussed, the idea that you had, had it, 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 it speaks fire. Sure. And I think that is where the issue is. All right. So for us, it's a lesson, not only internationally, for us in Nigeria, it tells us that we must align our rules in our sports to align with international best practice if we we'll be taken serious. Because we're here talking about smoker, bigger than food. And we're also looking at it from the perspective that tomorrow Nigeria will have an opportunity to play or organize a major international tournament or send players to go and represent the country, whether I represent the country or represent themselves in international tournaments. So such players should be very, very mindful of some of this. Role. It is not good enough for me to know how to play the, the sport. You are a technical sound. You must also know the rules of the sport. Sure. So that you will not so get so there uh, and all of a sudden you are being accused of deliberately fixing your match or something like that. Or you you mistakenly went to talk to somebody about the possibility of predetermining the results of a match. And before you understand, before foul of the road. And that is the lesson, especially for those of us who or those countries ever in Africa who for now have not got into the what I call the big league. Because for you to be in the big league, these are some of the issues you take to note. So when we talk about um, talent development in you know, certain Q sports, one of the flip side of it is when not just developing talent alone, they also need to be learning the ropes, the rules and all of that. And we are developing people that know the responsibility, people with integrity, people who are noble, people who are who use the word righteous, or people who know what they are doing. Fantastic. All right. I will be talking talent development as pertaining to sports, billiards, pool, and snooker, and also you know looking at how we can also inculcate you know the rules and regulations you know binding on all players. We're going to short break now. When we come back, we'll discuss um, facts file and also players profile. Stay tuned.